Hi, I'm Terry Murphy, Senior Editor for Realty Times, Women in Business and Women in Real Estate. And today we have double trouble, double luck. We have the best ladies in real estate. Our guests today are superstar top producing team, her team leader and president of Infinity Real Estate Group in Pearland, Texas, the amazing Christy Buck and her amazing sidekick, Samantha Knorr, who's her Chief Operations Manager. Now, here's a little bit about Christy. She, shares, she really shares an extraordinary story about how she started as a young mother uh, who started her legacy actually in the real estate business uh, on a basically a dining room table with Samantha and a, and a folding table for a buyer agent. And now we are, how many years later, Christy? 13. Only 13 years later, we have 28 agents, a $2 million building, Two grown boys who are absolutely gorgeous, and more, a dog named Finney. So welcome, Christy Buck. Thank you so much. So how do you go from a folding table to $2 million buildings? How do you do that? I, I happen to know that you're not Giselle Bunch and you're only five foot maybe. Uh, so how amazing is that, that you could be such a role model in the real estate market for women in business? How did that happen? Well, um, we spent many years, I say 13 of me and Samantha working together or Samantha and I working together, um, but 21 in the business. And I always had an assistant, Terry, um, to just help while I was out in the field. Um, then we hired um, Samantha 13 years ago and we worked well together. We did the same thing year after year, 50 to 70 transactions. I was out in the field. She was the assistant at the office at the house in my study working. And in 2012, I decided that I needed more. There were agents doing more. Um, I was with a franchise at the time. We would go to awards and we worked seven days a week, called each other all night, making sure we remembered things. Um, but these other agents were doing more than I was doing. So we had to figure out how. And that is when I went to a conference and met Burl Workman um, and decided to hire a coach to better understand how to get to the next level because there was no way that we could work any harder than what we were already working. And I have to know some inside information about that. Uh, Burl Workman, Workman Success Systems, is a colleague of mine for many years and had built an extraordinary business around systems because he realized early that systems were the key. Now, I remember him discussing that you weren't particularly embracing the systems right up front. Would that be accurate? That is 100% accurate. So when we hired Burl and he asked us, what's your CRM? What's your system? What's your follow-up? What's your processes? It was absolutely none. I mean, there's not really a CRM. When the file closes, the manila folder goes to the attic. And that's embarrassing to say that even seven years ago um, that the manila folder went to the attic. It was a closed transaction. Um, it, so our systems and our processes, how did we keep up with leads? How did we manage all of our clients that we had? How did we keep up that every I was dotted, T was crossed? We just did it by memory, um, which kept us extremely stressed working all evening, did you do this? Did you do that? Um, where did I write that lead down? It's on a post-it note, it's on an envelope in the car. Um, just zero chaos. processes. Chaos. And so, so, mm -hmm. so you had to come up with embracing the systems eventually, correct? correct. Yes. Uh, because up to that time, even though you were doing some pretty good business, you really didn't have a system for incubating, converting, and then of course nurturing even past clients, would that be true? 100% true. Um, we would do one with, with a close client, one little step with a company that would send them a mail out for 10 years. That was it. But we didn't do any follow-up or, or, or contact with past clients. So um, the main things we pushed back on was certain action plans and CRMs, but we embraced some things and learned a lot. And then we pushed back on a lot which was a mistake, the quicker that but change is hard, right? So all of us put, push back on change. Um, but after the first year, when we started going back around the same block that we already tried to take us around, 
Um, and then we stopped and picked up more tools that he had showed us the first time around. Um, it just continued to grow. Everything he taught us in the beginning was right. We just didn't embrace it fully as we should have the first, first year. Well, you know, I think that there's a mindset there too. Obviously you've survived, you had been doing well, you were busy, which uh, many agents interpret being busy as being productive, which we know it isn't. But you got particularly um, comprehensive about lead tracking and lead conversion and how much it cost. But then you started bringing in buyer agents and part of that um, also brought in a whole series of management and uh, mm -hmm. core values and mission statements and standardization. Now, I know that Samantha has been particularly helpful because she is the queen of all things Excel. And she understands those spreadsheets like no one I've ever met. Hard to believe somebody that beautiful and that disciplined could, you know, do something that amazing. But what was the one thing? What was the biggest aha for you? Was it the lead tracker, the top 50, um, maybe the, uh, the reach out to the community so that you had a brand? What was it that specifically where you think, feel like it really took a point and turned? So that's a tough question because all of it was so important. I mean, every bit of tracking our leads. And when I originally got into to coaching, one of Burl's first questions was, how have you gotten to where you are now? What's made you successful as you are? And I, my response was marketing. Well, what in marketing? And I just said everything. So I wasn't tracking what worked. I just kept doing the same thing every year. Um, tracking what worked was huge so that we quit spending dollars on what did, did not work, which was every single phone call, where did it come from? Um, I would say the biggest tool that was a game changer was Lead Tracker. Entering every single lead, whether it was viable or not, knowing where it came from, instead of it being on a post-it note envelope, a spiral, and making sure that we followed up with every phone call that we worked hard to get, but we dropped the ball on follow-up. So, of course, a lead tracker and a CRM. Oh, I was just going to say, because one of the things that we get pushed back on a lot is that agents will say, well, I have a CRM and I put it all in there, so why would I need a lead tracker? And I bet you have a great answer for that one. Yes, because if every single lead went into your CRM, um, our CRM would just get over overwhelming. There's just too much. So viable leads, which every lead, unless, I mean, of course, there's reasons that they're not, but we make sure what we put in our CRM is all leads that have potential. So every single time the phone rings doesn't necessarily need to go into your CRM, but we can follow up on it and put a next follow up date. And it gives us a quick um, point of reference on where our leads are coming from. So um, every single lead that goes into there, then we can do the graph and show we had this many phone calls on signs, this many phone calls on billboards, company cars, whatever it is. So it's a very quick point of reference on where we're getting our business. And that really gives you a great blueprint for where to market and, and how to market. So you've been very successful by adding people to your, your team. And one of, the, one of the biggest pushbacks we get is that the team leader doesn't really want to manage people like buyer agents and inside sales people. Tell us a little bit about your staff and how you built it. Okay, so let me backtrack on that just a little bit. The hardest part about being an agent is letting go. Um, it Yay. is letting go. So not letting go with what I had Samantha doing, which was, you know, just the paperwork behind the scenes. I could do that. But letting go and adding that first team member was my hardest struggle. This me and Samantha working in my home office for years. And when Burl said to hire a buyer's agent, Christy, you have to hire a buyer's agent. Um, I don't want a buyer's agent. People want me. They called me. They were referred to me. And I think one of the most impactful things that Burl taught me is I hate to bust your ego. They want a house and they heard about you. So if the person you send out is trained and trusted by you, 
you are not going to lose them and they're going to be just as happy knowing that person is working with your same integrity and being trained by you. So it was difficult to hire my first buyer's agent. She was working um, in the home office on a card table. So we hired Mona, our first buyer's agent, and Burl literally had to tell Samantha one day to take the phone, the lead phone, the phone that rang with leads out of my hand and hand it to Mona and not give it back to me. And I, I even said, how about if I give it to her during the day when I'm here, but then I keep it at night and on the weekends? And the answer was no. Um, so it was hard to let go, very hard to let go, but he needed me focusing on listings, not out running with buyers. We quickly went from one to two to three buyer's agents. When I realized how much business we were losing, by not having multiple people working buyers, it was amazing to me that everyone that I let her work, she closed them. I wanna say her first month with us, it was 12 or 13 buyers she was closing because I was letting go, but think of how many I was losing by thinking I was the only one that could do it. So it was tough to let go, but once I did, Oh my goodness. Yes, it's wonderful, but it's a transition for managing people. So now my agents are my clients. Now that I have 15 agents and it's all a team, we're not a brokerage, um, they are my clients. So I work very hard to treat my agents as I did my clients. So there had to be a formula for X amount of leads for X amount of buyer agents so that you would um, be able to basically systemically grow the business. Correct. Um, you have a special system for how you keep communicating with this whole team every day. Would you uh, want to explain that? So on our team, every single day we meet for huddle. Um, it's either nine o'clock or 10 o'clock. The agents like to do um, nine o'clock when the kids are in school because they take them to school and come right on in. And the summers, they like to do 10 o'clock. So we're flexible, but we meet every single day for a quick 20, 30 minute huddle. It gets your agents up there, present and working. It keeps us all on the same page. We say our core values. We talk about our core values. We talk about our daily success habits, who got their points in, who met their points. Um, their 61 points for the previous day who did their prospecting, where they did their prospecting from, how successful they were with their conversations. Um, we talk about missing, any missing documents, what the transaction coordinators need from the agents. So we get there, it's just like a football team. You don't just run out there and make a play. You meet, you talk about what you're gonna do and you're intentional with the plan. So we do that every single day. Wednesdays, we have our 9 to 11, our two-hour meeting to go over anything else that's big, events, trips, um, changes in, in our contracts, anything that we need to talk about is our Wednesday two-hour meeting. The rest are 20, 30 minutes. So that's a real important distinction for our viewers to understand. There's a big difference between a huddle and a meeting. Right. And, uh, and then they have, and that's part of uh, the onboarding process is they have to, they have to attend huddles. Just uh, quickly, if you wouldn't mind, give us the anatomy of the team. So you obviously, you're the team leader and Samantha's operations manager. What else is there? So we have two transaction coordinators. Um, so they take the contract. All we want our agents doing is prospecting, showing, putting it under contract. The agent steps back in for inspections, gets that situated, and the transaction coordinators have very detailed job descriptions to get every single detail of the contract is taken care of by the transaction coordinator. We also have Morgan, which is our, she supports three agents um, it, with pop buys, note cards, helps them prospect. Uh, any agents that's producing at a certain level, they get a personal assistant to share. So she has three of them that she helps with their day-to-day, -day, typing contracts, whatever they need done while they're out in the field. So they can just call in and say, type a contract. Morgan is three of their assistants. 
Um, we also have Melanie, our top, top producer. She has her own personal assistant because she's so busy. Uh, we have Mona, which is our commercial department. She has her assistant, Kyle. Commercial is much different in Texas. You can't put people on custom searches. You have to search all the time. So our commercial department has her own assistant. We have Samantha's assistant, which is Jordan. Um, Samantha has to have help. She's very, very busy and spread thin. And then we have Bryn, which is also our social media. She does all of our social media, landing pages, uh, Facebook pages, all of all our community uh, pushes that we do with other small businesses. Um, who else am I missing? Our office runner. We have an office runner that does all of our signs, lock boxes, and errands. Keep that in-house. It's too expensive to pay companies to put your signs out. Um, so you really have clear, you've made, had clear, uh, clear job descriptions, a uh, clear accountability and processes in place to measure. I think that's just a terrific way to run a business. If you were giving advice to someone who is a solopreneur or somebody who is brand new or, or has been in the business for a while by themselves and, and struggles with that, mm, I can do it myself, everything, warrior princess, just show me the way. What would you say to that person? I would say the number one thing you need is a, at least your first assistant. You have to have your first assistant. If you do not have that number one person, you're doing $15, $18 an hour work when your time has to be focused on getting new business. So I say day one, you have to have your first assistant with the right person in the right position by knowing how to hire, knowing how to interview, knowing what you're looking for. Not anyone can be your right hand. It has to be the right personality type. So two agent personalities, not gonna work for an assistant. So that first assistant is very important and letting go, letting them do it, training them, developing them and trusting them to do their job so that you can focus on more business. That's such a great analogy. If somebody wanted to refer to you or to contact you, what would be the best way to do that? To refer to our team? Yep. Who would they refer to? No, I mean, with how to contact you. Would they contact you best by email or by phone? Uh, uh, phone or email. Okay, and that number would be? 832-517-8414. And our email is Christy, C-H-R-I-S-T-Y, at Christy Buck, B-U-C-K, team.com. Now, yeah. Samantha checks all my emails, but she will get them to me. Yeah, Samantha does everything. We're, get, we're about to have another segment with Samantha. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. You're an amazing, you know, you've got a story here that needs to be told because it shows that you can just do it when you listen, when you respond, and when you monitor your business. So thank you so much for joining us here at Realty Times, Women in Business and Women in Real Estate. Thank you.